Aloha, everyone. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. And today I have another great program for you. And before I begin, I want to make a disclaimer. I always do this when uh, I feel that it ought to be said. First of all, everybody out there knows I'm a Democrat and I'm going to be supporting the Democratic candidate for all offices, including mayor and the rest of that. But so having done that, got that out of the way, um, I want to tell you why and what we're doing on this show, show today. I have, for the last few months, been a member of the Charter Commission for the City and County of Honolulu. And during that time, I've learned a lot about what the city uh, does for all of us on Oahu. And I thought it would be fun if we could actually talk to some of the people who are doing the work there. You know, um, separately from any kind of political, you know, um, statement or, 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 or uh, uh, you know, uh, marketing. So this would be uh, talking to two individuals. I've got two guests today who are hands-on. The ins and outs of the city and county of Honolulu are with us this afternoon. First of all, we have the, the mayor's managing director. Uh, this is the guy that's like the no better than the vice president. Vice president doesn't have regular jobs, but he's sort of the vice president of Honolulu. So he's the managing director, Roy Amimia. Uh, welcome, Roy. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Yeah, let's do that. And we have uh, with us Ray Sun, and Ray is the mayor's chief of staff. Right. So you do all the things that the mayor is supposed to do that he then waves at people for doing. Right. No, no, <laughs> you better not stay there. <laughs> well, we, we're great to have both of you here today. And so um, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, Roy, uh, you know, before you became managing director, what, uh, how did you, this okay, sure. your journey end so, up where so it is? Before I, um, just, just for the sake of your guests, before we get to that, I guess the managing director is kind, of, kind of like if you look at a corporate um, structure, it's like the chief operating officer. So I kind of handle the day-to-day -day operations of the city, uh, the mayor being the CEO, right. uh, the, the big picture guy. And um, Ray supports the administration by um, working with the mayor to help devise policy. Um, and, and that's a major part of what he helps get done. Well, wow, that's great. And, and so that's what you do, but how do you get to where you are so that you're now the COO of the uh, city and county of Honolulu? So, so my background is quite diverse. I um, started off in banking. I was at the Bank of Hawaii for 20 years. Wow. Then I um, took a position with a, f a former mayor as the budget and fiscal services director for one term okay. for four years. Okay. Went back into banking um, for another 10 years and then uh, became the CEO of Olelo Community Television, which was quite different, again. <laughs> um, five years into that job, Mayor called didn't see it and asked if I'd be um, so from, interested. So from public television to uh, back to the city? Back to the city. Wow, that's terrific. And, and what about you, Ray? Well, like Roy, I've been around for a while, so the, the journey is meandering yeah. here and there. Um, a lot of private entrepreneurial work, a, a number of companies, which I still have and are still alive. I also put in uh, 12 years at, um, at the state. In fact, I right. came back because you invited me back. I was in Boston. <laughs> I was having a great time in Boston. You know, I've been waiting for you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you twisted my arm to come back to Hawaii. Um, that was in 1991, and I've been home since. Um, oh, fantastic. And a lot of public service in there, and enjoying it a lot. So, folks, these are the two individuals we have. If you have any questions for them, please call us at 415-871-2474. 415-871-2474. You can also tweet uh, ThinkTechHI. So, okay, can't talk about the city and county of Honolulu without getting into the biggest uh, public transport public project in the history of the state so obviously mass transit mass transit's the issue that everybody talks about no matter where so you know um what's up i mean where are we where what, you know tell well, us well we're well on our way as you know the um people of this 
community voted for a steel on steel rail project a number right. of years ago, and um, construction's well underway. It's moved from East Kapolei through um, the Eva Plain, through Waipahu, uh, Pro City, and now it's in the middle of Aiea uh, and heading on its way to uh, the halfway point, which is the stadium. And they also have um, contracted to purchase a number of the cars. Right. Um, 80 and all, I believe, as well as um, have built a, a uh, operation center over by Leeward Community College that is uh, some 90% of the way completed. So rail's on its way. It's so pretty this, exciting. You, you have your challenges, obviously, but rail, the, the message is that rail is on the way. Yes. And the biggest challenge, of course, is that construction costs continue to uh, accelerate, and that's put a crimp on the... Um, revenues versus the expenditures that we, we need to expand to complete the project. Isn't, isn't there some kind of relationship between s success and the rising costs in this sense? That one of the reasons why construction costs are go going up is because there's a lot of construction work. Right. Wouldn't you say that? There's a, there's a limit to the, the amount of rebar, to the amount of concrete, to the amount of labor that's on the island. And the more pressure there is on, on construction and development, the higher the um, the cost go, it's it's the marketplace, right? And um, and so yes, we're caught up in that. Quite a bit of it is caught up. Um, I think everyone who watches the economy though expects a, a, a little bit of a tail off in the next few years, um, and hopefully that means the drop in the, the last segment, which we're still struggling with. How we're going to finance? How we're going to do it? Um, we're, the, the mayor totally committed to getting that last segment done all the way to Almohana. Um But it'll be a challenge. Well, I tell you what, you know, Governor Igni found out about rising construction costs. You know, he, he, he wanted to, and he, he really should, air condition classrooms right across the state. And when they finally went out to bid, they realized that the cost had gone up because everybody's, uh, you know, working. You know, I had to go through that. And it, it's, uh, it's tough, but... Uh, uh, you seem to be facing the challenges. The mayor, uh, one of the things that I learned as I uh, worked with the city, on, uh, as I said, during the charter, was that uh, the mayor was is not satisfied, in my opinion, with, uh, the, wasn't satisfied with the management of this um, project. And he seems to be, uh, seems to have taken control of that, uh, you know, with uh, uh, the appointment of, um, former Congresswoman uh, Hanabusa. And, uh, you know, it seemed that there were some structural challenges and she seems to have stepped right in there. And this a kind of different air. I mean, is this true? Don't, I mean, is this don't the feeling? discount or? the appointment of Cobert Matsumoto as well. Oh, Cobert, Cobert yeah. Cobert brings um, a, a discipline, a business discipline that's uh, absolutely necessary. Um, and uh, it's hard to say that the mayor was reaching in to uh, improve the management because, y you know, in, during the charter, he doesn't have the authority to make those kinds right. of decisions. Right. He can only do it by influence. Um, so the appointments onto the board were really important appointments. Um, and then Mike Formby has also stepped up. Yeah, the, Mike, the Mike, you're a transportation director. Excellent right. person, right. by the way. And, uh, you know, you got really good staff uh, at the city and county, if there's anything that I've noticed. But, uh, yeah, I know, th and, and people ought to be real clear about that. And as I've discovered, and that is that the way that the project is structured, that the mayor actually doesn't directly uh, run no. the, uh, the mass transit project. So he can only, in a sense, be our uh, guardian by appointing the right people there. And uh, actually, frankly, he's done a really good job. But, you know, the, the rail's not the only project that we have. No, in fact, I'll tell you what, driving to work every morning, I run into your other projects, at least one of them. And you seem to be fixing every street in the city and county of Honolulu. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, you know, there, um, a survey was done a number of years back, and more than 40% of the roads on, on this island were um, basically substandard. And so the mayor made it a priority for uh, us to pave 300 lane miles a year. Right. First goal was for five years for 1,500 lane miles. He now has upped that to um, 2,000 lane miles that he wow. hopes to do. 
and it's making an impact. I mean, it, we, we instead of fixing potholes, we're repaving roads, and hopefully uh, we won't have to be navigating across potholes too much longer. People no, should understand that, you know, potholes and repaving, totally different. Potholes are very temporary, and they come and go, and, and the rain can and Yeah, one good it. rain, and you've got to go you back and yourself, fix it again. Didn't they just do that? But repaving is often reconstructing the road, which, which the 1100 that um, Roy is talking about is repaving, is actually re reconstructing those roads, sometimes rather dramatically, sometimes just the, the surface. Um, but those roads should last us five to seven years. And then the, the mayor's also brought in a new technology to um, extend that life a couple more years as well. You know, it's amazing because um, you know, I had the chance to do something like that. And, and it seems like the public always wants you to do, like, pave roads and things, but then they don't really like to go through it while you're doing it, you know? <laughs> and then they, uh, but when it's done, it's noticeably different, you know, it's noticeably mm -hmm. different. I, I don't know any other time that the city and county spend so much time working on infrastructure like uh, you folks have in the last few years, you know. Not only paving roads, but also dealing with uh, sewage and water construction and all of that, you know. And it's all related, you know. Um, we, we do have a problem with affordable housing Yes, and and you, you won't be able to get affordable housing if you can't provide the infrastructure in the way of adequate sewer, adequate water, um, and to to even an extent that bus and rail connects our communities. It's it's all related to infrastructure and the need to improve upon that because for for many decades really we've neglected to um, upkeep what we have, and so now we're playing a lot of catch up. Yeah, well, it seems like, uh, it just seems like it's basic common sense that you ought to take care of, of what, you, what you have. But oftentimes, it's more exciting to put funds into a new project than it is to take care uh, of something else. Deferred maintenance is the, is the death knell of, of public infrastructure. If you keep deferring it, it'll go down so badly that you have to replace it. That, you don't want to be there. Um, running the... The city is a complex place, though. It's a lot of these different infrastructures, from parks to streets to sidewalks to sewers. So a lot of it is this water. infrastructure. You know, Not, you know, I remember the reason why I recruited you years ago. It was to build houses. That's and right. You sort of mentioned that, you know. And we are going to go on a break. But just so you know, when we come back, I want to talk about the city's commitment to, first of all, its commitment to affordable housing, what you're doing. And the other big issue in people's minds have to do with the uh, number of people in our community that don't have homes. And, and what do we do with it? What is your responsibility in the scheme of things uh, where, uh, you know, homelessness is concerned? So while you're doing that, uh, the number to call in if you have a question, folks, 415-871. 2474, or you can tweet us uh, at thinktechhi. So we'll be right back with the two very, very important people who make our lives either better or harder, depending on uh, how committed they are. And fortunately for us, they are committed public servants. Hi, my name is Justini Spiritu. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m., we host the Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. This is the place you can come to for insight on the perspective and history and passions of Hawaii's farmers and all folks involved in Hawaii's local food system. What kind of folks do we have on? So we have everyone from local farmers. We have foodies, chefs. We also have journalists, uh, researchers, anyone who's actually working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So join us every Thursday and uh, tweet in to us and ask us some questions and leave your comments as well. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna. I hope you please visit us this summer. It's a wonderful summer. It's actually a cooler summer than we're used to. But I hope that you come back and visit us and watch our show, Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's at noon every Wednesday. See you then. Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe. And again, we are talking today about your city. 
the city and county of Honolulu some of the challenges, but more importantly, you, get, you go, are having an opportunity to get to know two very important people at the city and county. Mr. Roy Amemia, who is the managing director, and Mr. Ray Soon, who is the chief of staff for the mayor. So we left this just about uh, going into the break, talking about uh, the fact that uh, people, one of the big challenges for uh, government in Hawaii and for, for all of us is housing in Hawaii. And I know that traditionally the city uh, has had this problem to deal with. And so what are we doing now? What are we doing today with respect to, first of all, to housing in general? So um, people need to understand that this whole housing crisis occurred, um, and it, it did come up over a long period of time, but there were certain events that just created the perfect storm. Right. Like we had the Great Recession and the housing bubble burst and people lost their jobs with people coming back from the war and uh, they were not able to take care of themselves like um, because of war injuries. Right. We also had um, a big community down in the South Pacific because of sea level rise and health issues were coming to Hawaii um, perhaps unprepared to, um, to the economic challenges that they would face. And, and there was a whole host of things. And so we found ourselves with not just uh, one group that was homeless, but a whole variety of people that... Um, all different categories. All different people. categories. Some with um, mental illness. Is, is the mental Ill, uh, Ill population a, a very large population on the street? It's, it's not a very large population, but those are the people who you see out there yelling at themselves or yelling at people and pushing shopping carts and right. defecating on themselves. And so they're, they're the, probably the toughest uh, group that we have to work with, right. especially since um, uh, the health, mental health services have not kept up with... Um, Which um, is a state function. It is a state function. Which we'll get into right after this but, but, we, <laughs> but we work hand in hand with the state we, we've um, the, the governor and the mayor have uh, have certainly bonded on this issue and um, yes they deliver most of the services we deliver a lot of the hardware um, okay when you say hardware what are you talking uh, we're, about we're, we're trying to get uh, you know put together homeless encampments and villages and uh, places where you can move the homeless or buying buildings and retrofitting them in order to house house the homeless, but you, it, it'll never be successful without the services that go hand in hand with it, helping people deal with their their addictions or their mental illness um, or getting job training so that they can get a job. Oftentimes it's just a, a matter of difficult times for families. I don't think people, and, I, and this may seem like repeating ourselves in a sense, but I don't people don't know if uh, people in general understand the important relationship between the infrastructure that we were talking about earlier, the, the idea of uh, transportation and so forth, how important that is uh, f to solve the ho homeless problem. I mean, it, it, and I, I heard the, uh, the mayor often talk about the idea that uh, it's not just about fixing roads or building a mass transit system, it's really about the social policy being behind people being able to move. You know, and, yes. uh, and I think you're saying some of that. Right, and part of the nice, the, the nicety of having a rail system is that you'll be able to build housing around the um, stations, and these you can you can kind of uh, ease the um, requirements for parking, for example, because people no longer need cars. Right, and, and we'll build up, and they can get to work, and um, in the long run, it's going to really help save. Um, create housing housing for our people. Well, I think, the, I think we need to be, you know, it's not just about bricks and mortar. We're really talking ultimately about people. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned something that was really interesting to me, uh, and I'm not sure if the audience really understands that, but you said something about global warming having an impact on uh, our uh, problems uh, regarding uh, the lack of uh, adequate housing, uh, and how's that? Well, I mean, what's? You, I I don't know how to. You know, global warming is going to have an impact on how we settle the land. Period. Right, period. And what we do. Uh, you know, a really really good example is the um, the Mapunapuna area, which floods right now, and it floods more dramatically than it did 
just four or five years ago. Yeah, see, I don't know if people really get that, that this is happening right that's, now. That's this not is water not that comes down from, I mean, it's part of it is that come out of the valleys, but it's really sea level rise that, that rises up, and the water table is just, it almost emerges off of the ground, or at least it's high enough that water can't um, seep through. So that's a major so, area of this island, major. and it's already becoming... Uh, and and um, I, I know for a fact that uh, having just gone to Majuro in the last year or so, that the, the water on the Marshall Islands is just overrunning a great part of the islands that they live on. In fact, if I think it was in the afternoon, the, the, the entire airport would be on the runway would be underwater. And so that's going to have an impact on people needing some place to go. And as you pointed out, they may not have been uh, as ready for moving here as uh, the people may have thought. But it also tells us, you know, this perfect storm. We, you have a re the Great Recession. You have global warming. You have all of this happening. You know, also don't forget, there's been a little bit of schizophrenia about the city and housing. We, didn't, we no longer have a housing department. We did not 10 years ago. Right. We built a lot of stock. Um, rental housing, most of it for lower um, AMI families, um, and we no longer do that. We got rid of the, the housing department under, um, under Jeremy's administration. Right. And um, so now when we have this need for more inventory, we don't have the you capacity to do that. You don't have any inventory. Do we, yeah. don't, we don't have the capacity to build. So what we are doing is we're doing a lot more partnering with the state, we're doing more partnering with nonprofits, um, and we're also talking to private developers about stepping up and increasing their company. And how is that working? You know, there's a little bit of, um, you, you want to use a little bit of regulation and then a little bit of... It's a carrot and stick. Right, it's, carrot it's and carrot stick, and right? stick. And so we'd like to increase the, um, the requirements for building uh, affordable housing. We, we're not there yet. We're having conversations. Yeah. Um, at the same time, we'd, we'd really like to see an easing of some of the regulations that limit the capacity of private We industry. have a caller on the line. Hello? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Governor Wyhe. I do have a question. Okay. Uh, please state your name, please. And where you're from. homeless if you had enough money uh, you just uh, you, you get by uh, do whatever you have to do and my question is are we getting enough money from the federal government uh, is there a way to get more money for the federal government or efforts being made to get more money from the federal government and if we don't get money from the federal government are we going to have to spend it out of our own pockets and doesn't that mean an increase in real property taxes for this and other things okay, uh, great with question. money we could solve the problem right Right. So, um, well, yeah, I guess with money we can solve any problem. But the question, did you get the question? Not the really. question yeah. is that uh, in order to really solve the homeless problem or the, the lack of a really uh, afford a housing stock in the state, of Hawaii, aren't we going to need money? Uh, it's a really a question of having more money. And if we had more money, we would be more effective with solving it. And is there more money available for us or any way that there can be more money available for the city and county from the federal government. Will the federal government step up and do this? Well, they, there are some programs um, to assist various states and municipalities in dealing with the um, housing um, issue. It's certainly not enough. Um, we need not just money, though, we also need land. And in an island like ours where there is a lack of uh, land that's developable, it becomes even much more of a challenge. Oh boy, that just opened up another door. You know, he, we, uh, well, the, the, the last part of the uh, caller's question was, and if we don't get money from the federal government, does that mean that we're gonna have to raise taxes? Well, hopefully not. What we're doing are certain uh, things where we're trying to engage, for example, private um, homeowners by allowing them to build accessory, accessory dwelling units right on their own properties. Uh, so that you can put up a granny home, and uh, we'll give, we'll approve it quite quickly now, and we'll waive the various uh, fees that you would normally have to pay the city, such as uh, water hookup and sewer hookup and park dedication fees. We're waiving those for a couple of years, and hopefully.
that will help um, create inventory of um, so the state the state the state being helpful in all of this I, I just um, want I, I know it's a challenge to be it's as the much county a challenge government for, for them as for us okay uh, in getting funds I mean it's not for lack of trying that we're not getting as much but they got land they have land. have land. And, and why can't they cough up some land? And we have been talking to HHFTC about doing exactly yeah, that. Yeah, instead been, of building all those multi-billion dollar condos, wouldn't it be fun <laughs> if they actually gave up some land for affordable housing? And I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be political today, I promise. Okay. But it seems like they could do a little bit more for uh, lay, giving land up for affordable housing. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we think that... Um, more players have to step up in order to make affordable housing uh, a reality. Because if the market just allows it, if we just allow the market to just function purely, uh, what developer is going to build on, on the affordable side when they can make as much money well, as, 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 as you can elsewhere? You know, right. I mean, that's just co common sense. So and, um, and I, 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 I got to tell you, though, um, Governor Ike seems to think that, uh, that something can be done. And, uh, and I know that he, uh, I just heard him say that he and the mayor have been working for, on some kind of joint program, but the city, the state does have land, you know. Yes. Yes, and they do have land around our um, rail stations. And so they do have a group that's working to see how they can best um, utilize those lands. The, and make it available for housing. As housing and other uh, and purposes. And other activities. Yes. Yeah. So, what's it like to be the county as opposed to the state? I mean, uh, well, having worked on both sides, yeah, that's I, why I'm I, looking I, at you. <laughs> I can tell you that um, being the in the county is being the, the poor sister um, uh, because you're you're constantly you're a product of the of the state. You know, the, the state created the county governments, and and they. They treat the county governments like that. Like they created um, so, it? Yeah, so you're often hat in hand. Not that, a very good church you're going to. But there was a time when that was necessary because <laughs> the counties didn't have the resources or the capacity or the expertise to get the job done. I think that's no longer the case. Well, I, I tell you what. Greater sharing of responsibility. Given the fact that you happen to be the poorest sister, I, you know, you both seem to be doing a great job, and I want to thank you so much for being willing to come on our program and to talk about things that are of interest to the people of Honolulu. We appreciate that. Well, we and thank you for your leadership on the Charter Commission, for example. Oh. That, that, that's going to help us tremendously. Yeah, it helps so at this point when we get to be mutually, uh, you know, <laughs> like an admiration society. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. We look forward to seeing you again at, with Talk Story with John Waihe'i two weeks from today. Aloha.